Well, welcome students uh, to episode six of our awesome uh, student series talking about relationships and how we relate to each other. My name is Mac and I get to be joined by... My name is Evan. And uh, I serve at the Berwyn campus. Evan serves at the Station Hill campus working in this student ministry. We are so excited that you are here today. And so as you are gathering around, uh, whenever you're watching this, we just want to welcome you to this time. And so Evan, I was thinking about today, and we get to hear from Amy Joe later today about uh, a lesson from First Timothy. What is something that someone has taught you how to fix or make or something like that? Yeah, so when I, uh, when I was in college, I had a job as a valet. I was parking cars at a hotel, and I could not drive a stick shift. I couldn't figure it out. I would have to sit in them and just stare and think about what I'm doing. And I, I could not figure it out. And it took one of my friends who had been driving it since he was a kid, uh, coming alongside of me and explaining like how to do it, explaining the steps behind it, explaining like when to do what. And uh, after a while, I finally figured out how to do it. And uh, I would not have been able to do that without him explaining that. <laughs> That's awesome. Mine also has to deal with a car as oh, well. Good. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was actually fixing my wife's car the other day and her back window could not seem to shut. I was trying to figure out all the different levers and trying to figure out why is this not shutting. She has a Jeep and, uh, and a Jeep Liberty and it's really difficult. And so I had to call her dad actually and be like, please help me figure out how to fix this Jeep. I don't know how it's going. And he'd walk me step by step to be able to say, this is how you close the latch on the Jeep to be in it and it will work out this time. And so for us, we're gonna be talking about who are people in your life that have come alongside of you, uh, who have taught you how to fix things, how, taught you how to live well uh, in this uh, relationship with Jesus as we study his scripture. And so we want to ask you, what is someone that someone has uh, taught you how to fix or taught you how to, uh, has come alongside of you and taught you how to do? And so uh, we're excited to hear from Amy Jo as she talks about the importance of having those people who speak into your life that teach you how to live as we learn how to be better disciples of Jesus who make us so here you go. Here's Amy Jo. Thanks, Mac and Evan, for sharing just that icebreaker. I had a situation with um, my life as well where I had to have somebody come alongside of me and teach me something. I had a condition when I was born that I actually have extra bones in my feet, which is maybe something you probably didn't know about me. I don't know that you would need to know that about me, but I did. I had two extra bones, and it's called accessory navicular and I played college soccer and this is kind of a reminder of what my feet used to look like before I had surgery. They had to put this cast on my feet and so you can actually just see how the extra bone was kind of sticking out and soccer and all those things just added up and I eventually had to have surgery and I had it when I was working as a girls minister here and I uh, was on crutches, I had to have a walking boot, and I had students that were walking alongside of me through that whole process, and I could not remember when it was time to get out of the boot and off the crutches. I couldn't remember how to walk. I know that sounds crazy, but I could not remember what I needed to do to walk without limping. So I had students all the time, so, so kind, walking alongside going, hey, you're limping. I was like, I know, I just, I don't know how to walk. And finally, I had a leader who's a good friend of mine named Jean. And she said, do you know you're limping? I was like, yes, I know I'm limping. And then she said, you know, you're, you're putting your, your toe down first. You should, put, you should put your heel down. And nobody had said that to me. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's, that's it. I, and I started walking through and reteaching myself and my muscles how to put my heel down first, heel to toe, heel to toe. Jean was the one who came alongside and taught me again how to walk. She didn't walk alongside and call me out and say, you're limping. She was the one that taught me how to walk. We, we need Jeans in our life, people like Jean, who are coming alongside of us um, in our spiritual walk that are saying, hey, this is how you walk with Christ. I've noticed you've been limping in this area, but here is how you walk with Jesus. And I'm so thankful today that we get to read about a relationship that's very much like that. Paul and Timothy in 1 Timothy 1, 18 through 19, 
we get to see Paul walking alongside of Timothy. And Timothy was a young pastor in Ephesus at the time. And, and Paul is a seasoned pastor. And he's walking alongside and saying, you've got to fight the good fight. In fact, if we read it, it says, Timothy, my son, it's his spiritual son, I'm giving you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies previously made about you so that by recalling them, you may fight the good fight. And he talks about this good fight. Um, this good fight that he's talking about is the, the struggle of passing on the gospel. It's that good fight of always making sure that you're passing on the gospel and discipling others. And so he talks about the good fight, but he doesn't stop there. He tells them, he tells them very specific instructions of how to do it. So he passes on the, um, the instructions. He, he talks to him about how to walk. I think it's really important um, that we have Christian people in our life, mentors, disciplers that are walking alongside of us, spurring us on, not calling us out, but calling us up. A good friend of mine just gave me words for that, and she just reminded me that as Christians, we're not called to point out things in each other to call them out, like you're limping. We're called to call them up, to change their gaze from looking at themselves and their flaws to looking at Christ and adding that filter to, uh, th to their lives. So one of the things that we want you guys to do is to begin to think about who is coming alongside of you to call you up not call you out. Who is discipling you? Do you have somebody like Paul who is reminding you about the good fight? He says that even again at the very end of um, 1 Timothy. He says it in, in chapter 6. He says, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and about which you have made a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. He wants to keep that front and center in Timothy's life. Those are such good words, and it's so true. And just like Paul and Timothy and that relationship is vital, we have to have Paul's and Timothy in our life. And not just who is a Paul in your life, who are you being a Paul to? And I know maybe some of you right now are thinking, I don't know enough to be able to walk along some, uh, alongside somebody and say, here is how you walk with Jesus. I, I know that we've been talking about this for a while, about saying the words, follow me as I follow Jesus. And you may be thinking, not me, I'm not ready for that. But if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he is alive and at work within you, and he is going to equip you for those conversations. We all need to have somebody like Paul walking alongside of us, calling us up, not out, and we need to come alongside of others and do the same. That's how we get to be disciples that make disciples. We get to, if, it, if we don't have somebody else that we're pouring into, it stops with us. Somebody's discipling us. We get to overflow that into somebody else's life. So what does that look like for you? I know that Mac and Evan are going to wrap it up with a challenge. So I would encourage you to begin to think through how do I do that in my life? Who do I need in my life? And who do I need to be walking alongside of? Well, thank you, Amy Jo. That was a good word on just how to, uh, how to walk alongside people and to encourage people to walk toward and walk, uh, walk with Christ and walk alongside one another. And so we want to ask you those same questions. So who is walking alongside of you uh, to, to direct you toward Christ? Who, who do you have in your life that's doing that? If you have to think about that and think, I, I don't know if I have someone like that, we would love to help with that. Maybe you have people in your life. Maybe you have friends. Maybe you have a parent or a mentor at uh, your church, at your campus, uh, and that's great. But if you don't have someone in your life doing that, uh, we would love to help in that way. Mm -hmm. And for sure. And also, we want to challenge you guys as well. Who is someone that you can speak life into? We don't believe, one of the things I love that Timothy says, Evan, is don't let, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but live in a way with conduct, faith, purity, love, all of that. We believe that you are called to be leaders. And so that means that we believe that you're supposed to be disciples of Jesus who also make disciples of Jesus. 
And so whether you're in sixth grade or 12th grade, however, whatever life stage you're in, we believe you are called to do life with other people just as other people have done life with you. And so if, we wanna, if you want to get connected or if you want to get involved in community and learn what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus or even what does it mean to disciple someone, uh, to be more like Jesus. We want to be there, just as Evan said, to be able to help you alongside of that. So what we'd like for you to do is text TALK to 623-623. Again, that's TALK to 623-623. And we will connect you with a student minister who will be able to walk alongside of you just as Paul walk, walked alongside Timothy to help you grow in what it means to look like Jesus. So thank you again, Evan. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. What a great, great day. We cannot wait to see you guys again on another Sunday. But until then, be blessed. See you later.